nothing out of the first session of the patient advocacy track of this year's ESMO in Madrid. And the topic was caregivers in cancer, something that we often don't talk about or that doesn't make the agenda at cancer conferences. And it was actually quite insightful because one of the speakers presented that actually 20% of our populations can be considered informal caregivers. And informal caregivers are caregivers who provide care, as the name says, but without a professional context. And most of that work actually happens without being paid for. And this means that they contribute an enormous part to our care provision in our healthcare system. So that obviously has direct monetary impact. So they are an important part of our care system. So while there is a high prevalence and they're so important, however, the awareness about these caregivers is quite limited. And that applies to everyone, even the caregivers themselves. What was pointed out was that as you don't prepare to be a caregiver. Usually it happens overnight, a diagnosis, and you all of a sudden find yourself in a role you were not prepared for. And that then comes with certain challenges. So one of them is a knowledge side, so understanding how can I give better care, how can I help managing side effects, and also quite physical activities. How do I lift a patient? How I do? How do I help a patient with everyday needs? Organizatorial, say, uh, organizational challenges. So it's a quite broad package for what which you're not prepared and for which is just then quite hard to get information and help. And at the same time, we should not forget that caregivers themselves are subjected to like distress. And we now often start measuring distress in cancer patients themselves, but then forget the caregivers. And one of the speakers actually showed that the stress and the distress was higher in the caregivers than the patients themselves. So there's a high unmet need and we just don't look at it. And if one then thinks about what this means is that caregivers being such an important part of our care system, but we are not preparing them for them, we're not supporting them, it becomes problematic because so much relies on them. And then another, uh, another talk, another session focused on the caregiver and how we support them better and that caregiving itself can be, become a part of your identity. And if then the patient dies, you lose also a part of your identity and how we can better support caregivers through that grief process. And the speaker highlighted that in order to reach caregivers, we have to start before the patient dies because this is when we have regular interactions and contact and that is the ideal, ideal time point to already start preparing people for the death but also what comes afterwards. And they, she introduced a term that I like very much. It's called complicated grief. I'd never heard about the concept, but it is basically where grief is a part of the normal human experience. Compli complicated grief is then a grief that impedes or hinders you in conducting um, every day's life's activities. I thought that the definition was quite optimistic because it said that we consider complicated grief it lasts longer than a year. Anyone who has ever been in this situation, so I lost my husband to melanoma and I can tell you one year is nothing when it comes to grief. So you get one grief, one year of grace period in grief, but most caregivers will tell you that the year two after losing someone is the worst year. So it, it, it turns out that this is like a quite a, an area where we pay too little attention, where there is high unmet need in itself, and it is an important part of our care system, and that we all have to think about how we can better support carers, that they can better support patients, and that we kind of make the overall and result better.